Did the Great Sphinx once witness the bottom of a sea? There is evidence. Things we have covered on this channel in the past which would suggest just that. Who built these astounding structures found dotted all over the earth? When were they built? Were they really, like academia would like you to believe, built by primitive civilizations with the use of primitive tools, often made of copper and notoriously soft metal? Or is there a possibility that these structures were made by a far more ancient, far more capable, world-traversing civilization? Built in areas of geological interest, most often the center of a landmass or placed upon key lines? Although there is a large number of artifacts and archaeological factors which strongly suggest this exact scenario of events, we feel there is one collection of artifacts, or rather evidence of this people's past existence, which just like their clear originally intended function, could tie these monuments neatly together. Known as the missing ancient metal clamps, given their predicted age and metallic composition, the fact that they are no more should come as no surprise. However, the carved seats that these clamps once sat within are still present in the stonework of many ancient structures found all over the world. Within our own modern day society, a society that can travel the world in a day and speak to the other side in an instant, technological advances are often copied or shared between nations. The concepts being the same, yet the manufacture slightly differing in form, and the metal clamps display this exact phenomena. Slight variations in manufacture that can be seen dependent on the landmass the ruin is found upon, yet the concept behind the construction of these amazing and perplexing structures, often constructed using blocks we have no explanation as to the placement of, remain the same worldwide. Dry stone walling often accompanied by these clamps made with such skill, the blocks are now often perceived to have been made to measure. The builders were clearly very aware of shifting, which can be seen, as blocks settled over the following years. This offers a presumption that these structures were intended to last many centuries, if not millennia, and the metal clips were also designed to indeed rust away to nothing after their function was served. Amazingly, it seems that out of the countless thousands used, a few of the clamps have somehow managed to survive. The clamps from pre-Columbian South America that have been examined show them to be made of a very unusual alloy. 2% arsenic, 95% copper, with traces of iron, silicon, and nickel. This composition is particularly interesting within Puma Punca because there is no source nickel anywhere in Bolivia. The clips are clearly a compelling link between these ancient structures found all over the world, but more importantly, the builders of them. These amazing artifacts clearly deserve much more attention. Thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, take care. Over a hundred years ago, a curious discovery was made in a town now named after this Upart. Rockwell within Texas. An ancient wall was unearthed, and although it was clearly of an artificial nature, its possible age predictably made a number of people in the academic world deny its artificial origins in favor of a far less likely scenario involving natural formation. Although magnetic exploration suggested that the rock wall had been where it lay for over 100,000 years, its origins have been heavily debated ever since its initial discovery. In 1852, farmers in Texas were digging a well when they discovered the wall. Conservative estimates have placed its creation some 100,000 years ago. Yet now, many believe it to actually be an antediluvian relic left by a now lost civilization some 200 to 400,000 years ago. Dr. John Geisman of the University of Texas, Dallas, tested the rocks as part of a History Channel documentary, giving credence to the denial of its artificial origins, suggesting they formed where they were, claiming that they were all magnetized in the same way. This tremendous age has led many to believe in modern paradigm, to deny a man-made origin, as this does to corroborate with the Bering Strait theory and currently upheld timelines in regards to evolution. 
However, there are others in similar fields who have found curious characteristics of the wall which do indeed suggest artificial origins. Geologist James Shelton, for example, and Harvard's architect John Lindsay have focused on its unique design features, including architectural elements, archways, lintel portals, and square doorway and window openings, which all suggest not only artificial creation, but functionality for humans, which nature would simply not create. The depth or past height of the wall is also an impressive legacy. The family of T.U. Wade, who moved to the area and initially made the discovery, dug to a depth of 40 feet to try and find the bottom of the wall. This excavation, however, was abandoned without finding the bottom. Years later, in 1949, Mr. Sanders of Fort Worth took up the baton and continued excavational exploration of the wall finding a number of megalithic stones at considerable depth and weighing several tons. After bringing them to the surface, mysterious pictographs were found upon them, further supporting the thesis of artificial origin. In addition, curious metal rings of modern composition were found embedded in rocks, suggesting the presence of lost technology. It would appear that the wall is indeed an antediluvian relic, one possibly submerged and subsequently buried in ancient sediment during the Great Flood. Modern studies have found that the wall is in fact six stories tall and 20 miles in length, with a number of individuals now attributing the wall to a lost civilization of giants due to its inexplicable nature. Quote, it is good when examples like rock wall appear that test our abilities and cause us to question basic Newtonian mechanistic assumptions that have not been modified for over 150 years. Physics had to abandon this approach at the turn of the century, opting instead for relativity and quantum mechanics in order to further their understanding of matter and the universe," said James Shelton, geologist from New Orleans. It is a relic which we find highly compelling. When within this modern world of academic study, a ruin is found, a ruin of such astonishing feature or size, one which is clearly an out-of-place artifact within the realm of its accompanying modern paradigm, no matter how amazing, how historically important, due to its sheer inexplicability, one will rarely hear about it in popular debate. And one such ruin is Kat Shibib. The archaeological site was first identified by British diplomat Sir Alec Kirkbride in 1948. An ancient wall over 93 miles long, whose origins are predictably unknown. Ever since its initial discovery, a range of disciplines, including archaeologists, scientists, and anthropologists, have studied the wall. Yet the date of the Khat Shabib's construction, however, is still claimed as unknown, regardless of it also being claimed as, quote, widely debated by archaeologists. Regardless of this claim, many will have never heard of this spectacular ancient ruin, a reality we claim not by coincidence, but design. Recent study of the wall by the Aerial Archaeology and Jordan Project have found that it runs north-northeast-south-southwest, spanning a total unbroken distance of 66 miles. However, they also discovered sections where two run parallel, this for an additional substantial distance. Quote, if we add the spurs and stretches of parallel wall, the total length would be about 150 kilometers or 93 miles, wrote David Kennedy, a professor at the University of Western Australia, and Rebecca Banks, a research assistant at Oxford University, in a paper published recently in the journal Zeitschrift for Orient Archaeology. It is unquestionably a remarkable ancient ruin, one evident of a once highly capable, yet now lost, civilization. It is a ruin which we find highly compelling.
thanks to improvements in modern archaeological technologies, and indeed the evolution of satellite resolution imagery of our spinning living blue marble, we are fortunately entering an era where thanks to penetrative strata photography, the last remaining legacies of what we have long claimed would be found, that of once highly capable global lost civilization or possibly many. And yet another proof of this hypothesis has recently been rediscovered in Iran. A gigantic artificial wall, measuring approximately 71 miles in length, extending from the mountains of Bamu to an area near the town of Jamarg, Iran, has been exposed. To put this ancient feat into perspective, computer systems have estimated that more than 1 million cubic meters of stone would have had to have been quarried, transported, and placed where they now lay, and this is a mere remnant of its past grandeur. Quote, With an estimated volume of 1 million cubic meters of stone, its construction would have required abundant resources, this in terms of labor, materials, and tremendous toil and time, wrote Sajad Alibagi, PhD of the Archaeological Department of the University of Tehran, in an article published in the journal Antiquity. Although the existence of the wall, long claimed as unknown to mainstream archaeology, those who have lived nearby for millennia have known about its existence all along, knowing it as Gari Wall or Gari Chen Wall. The Venture Party state that due to the wall's poor state of conservation, the researchers are not sure who built the structure and for what purpose. In fact, they are not even sure of its exact width and height. The best estimate is about 4 meters wide and 3 meters high. Its exact purpose remains a complete mystery, one which we find highly compelling. Rued Island holds an astonishing ancient secret. Located within the Mediterranean, it is the only inhabited island within Syria and we believe was once an awe-inspiring fortress. Having once been protected on all sides, although very little of the wall remains, what is still in existence demonstrates an incredible past civilization's prowess. Like with so many other ancient sites around the world, it was constructed using enormous megalithic blocks, once somehow masterfully placed atop one another. It is unknown whether this wall was created from fear of the seas or possible invaders, but this gigantic wall once enclosed the island completely. Known to the Greeks as Arados, it was renamed Ruad or Aruad by the Templars during the Crusades. How did this ancient civilization complete such structures? There have been numerous individuals of late attempting to explain away many of these enormous megalithic walls and buildings, such as the temples within Baalbek as mere Roman architecture. However, just like the academics they parrot, they conveniently have no logical idea as to how this was done. Relying solely on modern drawings of these events rather than any form of demonstration. As we have mentioned on many occasions, it would be a logical strategy to not only adopt such awe-inspiring works of architecture as their own, but also to steal techniques these civilizations would have been capable of and claim them as their invention, such as Roman roads, Roman columns, etc. There are many buildings on our Earth that are, we agree, undoubtedly 2,000 years old. Not only are their constructions documented at length, but their condition also reflects this age. However, with ruins such as the Baalbek temples, and indeed the Wall of Ruad, their condition, along with the inexplicable nature of their construction, is not only indicative of lost knowledge, but subsequently evade current explanation. This reality persists no matter how hard some try to explain them away as more modern achievements. Yangshan Quarry, Gornea Shoria, the Pregnant Woman, the Colossi of Menman, the list goes on. All these ancient builds incorporate blocks well into the thousands of tons with countless more lost to history. How these structures were built is a mystery, 
Yet, if they were indeed completed by our own more modern ancestors, why is this knowledge lost to the eons? Why did these civilizations not continue these miraculous feats of engineering? Why were these supposed capable civilizations not building impenetrable fortresses to protect their flourishing civilizations from possible invaders using these same techniques? We will continue to argue, and we feel, with good reason, that academia, along with many other suspicious individuals, are selling you a fallacy, not only to appear all-knowing, but also to conceal that which they do not understand. Who built the Wall of Ruad, or indeed the many other sites we so often cover? The history of the Earth is yet to be fully unraveled. It is a tale some find highly challenging.